Well, praise the Lord. I don't know if they had AC back when Jesus was around. I don't think they did. But uh, I think they still worshiped the Lord anyway, didn't they? Absolutely. Hallelujah. So with that, let's stand this morning and let's just do that. Let's worship our God. Jesus, we come before you right now, Lord, with our hands lifted up and our hearts open wide, worshiping the King of kings and the Lord of lords. There's no greater name in the world than the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Lord, we're here because we love you, we care for you, Lord, and we know what you've done for us, God. You died for us on the cross so that we might have life and life more abundantly. It's only through Jesus Christ that we can Have your way, Lord God. Let the Spirit of God permeate the room this morning. 
you want to stand up, you can. It's up to you. But you may be seen. All right. So we're thankful for all that God is doing and all that he's going to continue to do. And I want to share probably one of the most important announcements in the near upcoming future. And that is August 6th, August 6th. And that is a Saturday at 7 p.m. We are going to kickstart our revival here. Lord willing, we'll have some AC then. All right. So this is the first for us this morning, having the power, uh, intermittent power deficiencies, if you will, whatever. Maybe the power company needs to take some vitamin D. I don't know, whatever. They'll figure it out, though. Um, I was a little surprised. Didn't have a storm last night. A little surprised. But God knows, and we're here, and we're going to worship Jesus. And so be praying for the revival, and we'll let everybody know uh, any other details to come as we get here. Again, August 6th. So that's from Saturday to Thursday. We're going to have services every night, 7 p.m., except Sundays is going to be regular services. So we'll still have the Sunday morning, Sunday evening. But other than that, Saturday to Thursday, 7 p.m., every night, we're going to have a revival here. And Reverend Love, who is our evangelist in New Testament Christian Churches of America, which, by the way, right now, he's actually at her father's church right now in Pittsburgh, right? And speaking of the family, we have somebody here this morning, and that is my brother-in-law, right there, Brother hello, Woods. Hello. And um, I'd like to ask you, brother, if you don't mind, can you stay, stand up, please, and say something good for the Lord real quick now, absolutely, if you don't mind. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, good morning, NTCC Sioux Falls. I'll uh, back up here. Uh, it's good to be here. Honor the God who's ahead of my life, uh, my brother-in-law, uh, my sister. Uh, God is good. Amen. Amen. As we see, we have no AC, but let's push through. You know, we do what we want to do when we need to do it. So if yeah. it was a football game, a baseball game, a basketball game, yeah. you didn't right. have the AC, That's you it. still make it happen. Amen. So take this time to worship God. Get that word in. God is faithful. Amen. He's true. Amen. Through the valley, through the mountain. It doesn't matter. He's faithful. If you put your trust in God and keep him first, he will bless you. The enemy's trick is to, to try to make us believe that we have not already won this battle. Jesus died on the cross. It's finished. It's a wrap. All we have to do is activate that. He said, ye without faith. Ye, if you have a faith of a mustard seed, mountains shall be moved. So if you believe in that cross, you believe in the blood of Jesus, nothing can stop you. You can overcome everything. He said, fear not, I have overcome this world. Amen. Put your trust in God. Keep him first. Focus on the cross, and he'll make it happen for you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. And with that, I'd like to ask Brother Pugh and uh, Brother Baker, please, if you could come up here. We're going to receive the, the offering and tithe this morning. Now, um, we're going to start something special, and that is that, so, again, for the revival, Reverend Love, he travels to, and that's, by the way, that's his real last name. That's just his last name, Reverend Love. And uh, he's a widower. His, him and his wife were in the ministry for a long time, and he's still in the ministry. So he was pastoring a church. You know, his wife was promoted. And I'm not saying this to make get you to feel bad. I'm just explaining why we're doing this. And now God laid on his heart to do revivals, so he travels and does revivals. And so when he gets, he's not... He doesn't have a, a side job or anything. So this morning's offering, not the tithe, all right? I want to explain. There's a difference between an offering and a tithe. The tithe is your 10%. You should put it in an envelope and label it because the Bible says the tithe went in the storehouse. Amen. That's what it said. And so the tithe goes to the church. But the offering this morning Amen. is going to go to contribute for when he gets here to pay for his hotel and all the things that he has because... He lives off the off the gospel, Reverend Love, and so we're gonna prepare an uh, offering for him when he gets here, so that he's taken care of. We want to make sure he's taken care of when he gets here and all these things. So this morning's offering, I want to explain, it'll go uh, towards to meeting his needs when he gets here August 6th. All right. I'd like to ask Reverend Pugh to please pray. So. Lord, we're thankful again for your goodness, your many blessings to us. This time that we can give to you, Lord God, your work here, we ask that you would bless both the gift and the giver in Christ's name we pray.
that uh, just get in and get God, all right? God bless you. chapter, I'll just read a couple verses. Is that alright? <laughs> alright, let's go. Right. Looking at John chapter 8, verse 31. <clears throat> then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then ye are my disciples yeah. indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Yeah. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Reverend Pugh, can you please pray for the service? Loving Father, we're thankful again for your goodness and love to us. All that you do for us, bring us here today, Lord God, together as a family of God, yes. to be attentive to what you have for the church. Jesus. We ask that you would bless open hearts and 
things fill our hearts, Lord God, with your goodness, your love, your word, your desires for us, Lord God. And yes, that you bless Pastor as he ministers your word to us. We give you all the praise, we give you all the glory. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. The title of my message this morning is Freedom and Truth. Freedom right. Amen. and Truth. And while there have been many uh, prophets, preachers, teachers throughout times of time, they all had a similar message and a similar things that went on in their lives. Nathan the prophet told David, you can't commit adultery. Elijah, he preached against the immorality of the land, telling them you can't go out in a green field worshiping idols and committing all kinds of uh, sexual immorality while sacrificing your children. Stephen, the first martyr of the New Testament recorded in the book of Acts, while he preached the gospel message to the Jews, telling them that they had crucified the Lord Jesus and that they need to repent of their sins. The people covered their ears, literally. The Bible says they stopped their ears and they threw stones at him until he died. Why? Because he preached the truth. He preached the truth. A lot of people don't want to hear the truth. And that really is one of the marks of a true preacher. One of the marks of a true prophet, a true man of God, is that when they preach the truth, the whole truth, not a part of the truth, but the whole truth. That is the good part, the bad part, all of it. That's the mark of a true preacher and a true prophet. If you read the Bible, look at John the Baptist. Jesus himself said, there's no greater prophet save John the Baptist, save he that is least in the kingdom of God. And what did John the Baptist preach? A message of repentance. He said to King Herod, he said, you can't have your brother's wife. They put him in jail for it, and they cut off his head. What's the mark of a true prophet, a true preacher? To preach against sin, really. And to lift up Jesus Christ, of course, first and foremost. He said in Luke chapter 7, verse 28, For I say unto you that among those that are born of woman, there is no greater prophet than John the Baptist. But he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. People say we need to bring the old school gospel back. Right? Bring back the old school gospel. But I, I don't like that. You know why? Because the gospel, the Bible, it hasn't changed. Right. It's the right. same message. See, the same message has been applicable since the beginning of time. It's applicable for all people of all ages, all races, all places. It's the same. God doesn't change. The times may change, but God doesn't change. And the human nature still hasn't changed as yet. God has not set all things under his feet as yet, but he will. Jesus, let's go. Jesus was a good preacher, right? Yes, he he preached. What, what was Jesus' message? Mark chapter 1. He said, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. He's saying right now, imminent, right at the heels, as if something is chasing you and it's right behind you. It's about to get you right now. It's all right. Thank you. It's all right. Right at the heels. The guitar is about to fall over, right? <laughs> but really, when you read it, the way Jesus said, the time is at hand. It's right now. Yeah. It's time to repent. It's time to say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins and make it right in my life. That's the time. The time is right now. You look around society today, they all have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. 2 Timothy chapter 3 says, For men shall be lovers of their own selves. That's not hard to find today. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God. But this is the, listen, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. Turn away. Turn away from the ones that live what he said to stay away from, and they claim God. Turn away from the ones that claim to know God, but they live just the way that I read. Lying, cheating, killing, stealing, all those things. Stay away from them. These are of those sort which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. Ever learning, 
and never able to come to the truth. They ever learn, but they never come to the truth. The reason why there are so many people that are still in bondage because they have not been set free. See, they're ever learning. I'm preaching to you this morning about truth. They're ever learning, but they never came to the truth. They deny the power of God because they never came to the truth. Jesus said in John chapter 8, same chapter, he said, Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Right? So if somebody's not set free, they don't know the truth. Right? If you're still in your sins, if you're still in bondage, if Satan still has a grip over your soul, you're not set free. But you can be. You can be set free right now. He said, if the Son therefore shall make you free, it shall be free indeed. People want freedom. They want a reality. They don't want fake. They don't want phony. They're tired of the phony. They're tired of the fake and phoniness that is in this world. They want the real thing. They want something that's real. Come on now, you've been let down so many times in your life. But when you met Jesus, hallelujah, you met someone real in your life. He set you free. He gave you freedom in your life. That's what Jesus does for people. He sets them free. They're no longer truce breakers. They're no longer lying, cheating, stealing. No longer. They're set free. Jesus answered, Verily I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Are we free this morning? That's the question. Amen. Are we free this morning? Are you free this morning? Or is there something that has captivated your mind, your energy, your soul, and your spirit? Is there something in your life right now that's got a grip on you? And you feel that as if, if you took that one thing that has you so captivated and entrapped, and you took it and you threw it across the room, while it would fly back right in your face and taunt you and say, You can't get rid of me. Jesus can set you free. Yes. Jesus yes. can set you free. That's yes. what we're here for this morning. Jesus. I've shared it before. America is a mission field, right? We send missionaries overseas to wherever, and that's good. I am not putting that down. That is a good thing, all right? But we send missionaries over somewhere else as if, well, way over there, they've never heard about Jesus. They don't know him. We want to share Jesus with him, with, with all the people there. We want to turn to God. And praise God for that. But you look around America, we need to send missionaries here. Hello, we need to send missionaries to our next door neighbor, mm. to the person down the street, yes. to the drunk down on the corner store, drinking alcohol from a brown paper bag, going back on the other corner asking for some money so he can go drink some more. Jesus can set him free. Yes. Jesus can set him free. Why don't they ever look at the correlation between crime, disparity, and drug use, and drunkenness? Why don't they ever add those things up? Why don't they ever look at a person's life and say that it's bad? Why? Because they're stuck doing the same thing. They can't get out there in a pit and they're stuck there. But Jesus, he's got his hand out right now. He's got his hand out right now. He's saying, I can get you out. I'll get you out of depression. I'll get you out of your addictions. I'll get you out of your bad relationships. I'll get you out of everything that you're trapped in. I'll set you free if you just take my hand, if you just believe on me, if you just take my word. Trust me, he's a man of his word. He's never let anybody down. He's never lied to anybody. He's never gone back on his word, but he's true and it's real. And it's the truth that will set you free. Yeah. Thank you so much, God. Sending out missionaries. First, you got to get acquainted. You gotta get the people acquainted. Who is God? Who who is God? Who? I don't. Somebody can. Say, I don't know who God is. All knowing. I don't know who He is. Hebrews chapter eleven verse six says, "But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Amen. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is. First, you gotta believe that God is. He is. That's pretty simple, right? Not complicated. And that He is a rewarder." Of them that diligently seek him. He will reward you. But you first have to believe that God is. Who is God? All powerful, omnipotent, all knowing, omniscient being in the universe. God. God the Father. God the Son. God the Holy Spirit. Three separate persons functioning as one entity. 
God the Father sending His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into the world that He could come down at our level. Why? To lift us up. Yes. God had to come down at your level to lift you up. Amen. And guess what? When He was lifted up, and when He went back to heaven, He sent down the Holy Ghost. That's all three in one right there. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. That's who God is. He's the Savior of the world. Who is God in relation to humankind and the earth? Right? I can tell you who God is, but if it ain't got nothing to do with me, and, right? When I was a sinner, right, if you came to me and, like, I didn't want to have anything to do with you, you were not going to get anywhere past me. I mean, I just, I didn't want to talk to you. I didn't want to have anything to do with you. Just, and, what, what does that have to do with me? And, God has something to do with this world and with each and every single one of us. Yes, sir. Come on now, we know this verse. For God so loved the world. What does it have to do with the world? God loves the world. That he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That means everybody. Look around. We got Native Americans. We got African Americans, Hispanics, white folks. All kinds of folks, right? Yeah, Puerto yeah. Ricans, yeah. everybody. Yeah. It's an it's a everybody gospel. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's not prejudiced. Get the prejudice yeah. out of your heart. Yeah. Let Jesus set you free. He'll set you free. If you got prejudice in your heart, you're not saved. Period. Jesus is the one that is at the... Who is God, right? Introduction. Who is God? God. We know who God is, but Jesus is at the center of it all. Why do I say that? This is in regards to us. John chapter 12, verse 32. If I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. If I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. That's what Jesus said. He's at the center of it all. You're at the center of it all. He said, if I be lifted up, he was lifted up on the cross. If I be lifted up, he was lifted up from the center of the earth. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men. Men, ladies, you're included, all right? I will draw them all unto me. You see, just imagine Jesus at the center of it all. And the people are turned towards Jesus. And he's drawing them towards him. He's at the center of it all. You see what I'm saying now? He's at the center of it all. Regarding the human race, it has to be Jesus. It had to be Jesus. It had to be another man. It had to be somebody that got down on your level, felt what you feel. Yes. Multiply it. You say, I'm preaching. It's going, it's a rough time for me. It was worse for Jesus. All right? It was worse for He had to get down on our level so that all men could be drawn to Him. Saved from what? God's wrath. God does whatever He wants to. And what he does do is right for all that those that dare to question God and suppose that all their misfortunes in life are caused by him, they'll have nothing to say when they stand before God. God does whatever he wants and everything that he does, it is good. Period. He doesn't do anything bad. God's not going to cause somebody to have a misfortune. God, I just preached on this, the original intent, right? You got to look at God's original intent. Did God force Eve to take a bite of that fruit? Did God force mankind to bring in that sinful nature? No. He left it as a choice. And the choice is still ours this morning. Yes, sir. You can't have an argument with God. He doesn't have to say because we already know it. God gave people a way out. That's the thing. God gave people a way out. And if people want to argue with God and say that he's not right, why is this? Why is that? They have no place and no room to say that. Because we're saved from God's wrath. He gave us a way out. He saved us from sin. He said in Romans chapter 6, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? How are you going to live in sin if you say that you're saved? This is Romans chapter 6. Knowing this. That the old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. 
Likewise, reckon yourselves also to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yeah. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Jesus saved us from sin. I like this one. You know what else Jesus saved us from? Satan. Jesus saved us from Satan. Yes, amen. We know that whosoever is born, born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. And that wicked one toucheth him not. Satan right. can't touch a child of God. That's right. He Tell can't him, touch bro. a child of God. Tell him, bro. There's nothing. No weapon formed against him. He's going to prosper. Nothing. Yes. Nothing. Life happens. I understand that. But Satan's not going to be there to buffet you. That's right. He's not. You're set free. And Jesus, we'll be closing here very shortly. We want to, we can start making our way, actually. I just got a few more things. This is what has been given to us. Romans chapter 5, verse 6. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Yes. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure, meaning perhaps for a good man, some would even dare die. But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. What was given for us? Jesus. That's the greatest gift of all. You say, what, what, what about God? I don't care. He gave us the greatest gift of all. He gave us himself. There's no other religion where God came down, took the form of a man, and gave us life. For a people that didn't want anything to do with him, they rejected him, they spit on him, they put a, a crown of thorns upon his head, they beat him to a pulp, unrecognizable. And then he walked up that hill. A triumphant march up Calvary's hill, bleeding out in pain to be nailed to a cross so that we could have eternal life. That's my Jesus. That's what God gave for us. So this morning, as we bow our heads and close our eyes, the preaching may have been shorter, but the Spirit of God is still here. And I'm asking you right now, what do you want from God? What do you need? You know what you need. Come and take it. Take it right now in the name of Jesus. Don't let opportunity pass you by. The altar is open. This is an altar call service right now. You can come to the front, kneel down, and pray. Let Jesus have his life, have, have his uh, way in your life. Let him touch your heart right now. Pour your heart out before the Lord. He, he sees that. He sees that when people come up and they kneel before him, he sees that. He recognizes it. He sees it. It's humility in the heart. It's bowing over to God. You're not doing it for me. You're doing it for God. Come and pray. And take it now.